In recent days, we got another glimpse to the covert struggle conducted for some time now intended to disrupt or delay any technological progress in Iran nuclear and missile program. This campaign is now perhaps the most efficient tool of hindering Iran's progress toward nuclear capability. In Saturday, a blast killed an Iranian general related to the development of surface-to-surface -surface missiles. And yesterday, Iran admitted that it had been on the receiving end of a new cyber attack. Beyond the delay of the program, causing direct failure by an invisible hand as a psychological effect, it sends a message to Iran that its plan is breached and accessible. This may install doubt and make Iran believe that any equipment mal malfunction is due to external intervention. Leaks of information on the subject also contribute significantly to Iran paranoia, as much as actual sabotaging would, and may also create friction between these, those in charge of development and the Iranian regime. Covered activity may weaken Iran's determination, exact a high price from it, and signal that it's better moderate its position. Indeed, covered activity increases the pressure on Iran comparison with sanctions, while avoiding the price that a military attack on the nuclear facilities may inflict. Perhaps in the perspective of the Americans, while reportedly leading this campaign, this strategy by precious time allows sanctions to work and may encourage decision makers in Israel not to rush to other options. And for those who would avoid military action, covert activity may heighten the, pr uh, the pressure on Iran while enabling uh, uh, preparation of political and economic tools to the nuclear challenge. Having said that, external intervention, especially if carried out on a wide scale, can increase Iran's determination to achieve a nuclear capability. In general, it is not clear whatever whatever Western intelligence agency possess the capabilities to lead a campaign of sufficient magnitude that can reach the desired end, which is to influence the Iranian motivation. Moreover, a small action gone wrong can cause considerable political damage and harm the entire effort. It has been reported that the Iranian attempt on the life of the Saudi ambassador, Joubert, to Washington was in fact retaliation to the ongoing covered ops in Iran. Furthermore, one can ask whether covert activity actually hinders Iran progress. Perhaps those failures that are now stalling Iran's nuclear program have caused measurable impact compared to the scope of the Iranian project. Iran has built a broad-based nuclear infrastructure with redundancy, dispersal, and a protection in a variety of sites, open and hidden, civilian and military. At the same time, the program's immunity to military action increases as the time passes. This is mainly thanks to improvements in active and passive defense in the different sites. In this situation, when the chances of a military strike are high and costly, this kind of counter-proliferation activities becomes a more significant tool to assist in delaying the Iranian nuclear program. I want to introduce the, the speakers. Sibarel is a columnist, Middle Eastern affair analyst, and a member of the editorial board of Aharetz. Previously, he served as a newspaper managing editor and Washington correspondent. In 2009, he was awarded the Sokolov Prize for Lifetime Achievement in Print Journalism. Recently, he published his new book, When Cars Fall from Heaven. Ephraim Askelai is a senior research associate at INSS, where he focuses on proliferation issues. Prior to that, he worked for the Israel Atomic Energy Commission, the IAEC, for over 40 years, including six years at the International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, in Vienna. Ephraim Kam is the deputy director of INSS. Before joining the institute in the early 90s, he served in the IDF military intelligence branch and retired with the rank of colonel. In the last decade, he, was special, he specialized in Iran, and in 2004, in my opinion, he wrote what is probably the most comprehensive study about the Iranian challenge in Hebrew. WPS Sidhu is a senior fellow at New York University Center of International Cooperation, CIC, an associate fellow for disarmament at the Geneva Center for Security Policy, GCSP. He, was, uh, he researched, written, and thought extensively on the United Nations, regionalism, peace operation, 
Southeast Asia, confidence building measure, disarmament, arms control, and non-proliferation issues. Zvi, you're first.